You know, I was going to do this before I knew that Pastor Walt and Mr. Ann were here, um, but also October is a really special month, and, and it's great that they're here. But Pastor Walt and Mr. Ann have been our senior pastors now here at the Life Church for 25 years this month. Can we just honor them? We are so thankful for our pastors. It's an honor to be in your pulpit today, Pastor. It's an honor to serve here at the Life Church. You know, um, I didn't know that I would end up in San Angelo, Texas. My husband is from here, his family's from here, and we would visit. And see, I'm a Texas girl, but I grew up on the coast. The slogan for our city was the city of enchantment. It was very green. I came here and I was like, Brandon, this town has so much dirt. I've never seen so much dirt. The buildings are brown. The ground is brown. Like everything was brown. And I remember joking, and actually it probably really wasn't a joke. I was like, I don't think we'll ever live in San Angelo. And fast forward, obviously here we are. But I remember one time, Pastor, we were at the Melrose campus. And we were visiting family, and it's where the high school is now. And I remember there was such a strong conviction that I was supposed to be here. I cried in the bathroom because I had no idea how God was going to make it happen. But Brennan and I just chose to trust God, and we took the steps one at a time. To be honest, we had lived here a short time before, so we kind of had to eat some pride moving back. But um, it's so good when you know you're where you're supposed to be. And it's interesting now because I drive into San Angelo and I think it's the most beautiful place. And I'm so thankful to be here. Y'all have mountains. Mountains, right? So anyways, I just want to pray and then we're going to get started today. God, we just come before you and we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to come and to worship you and to hear your word. God, I pray that we'd be encouraged today. That we would just know so sure that we're loved and known by you, Father God. And so, God, just, we just thank you, Holy Spirit. I ask that you would just cause my words just to pierce hearts exactly. You, you're just so good. And you can make this word reach every person exactly where they're at. So I just give you glory for it. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today we're finishing up our series on the trail. And we have our key verse, and it's in Psalm, Psalm 17, 5. It says, I'm staying on your trail. I'm putting one foot in front of the other, and I'm not giving up. The Bible is full of these analogies, the trail. It talks about our journey in life, the way, the path, the road. It's a great analogy because it reflects there are so many ways in this world we can go, so many paths to travel, but we know that there's only one way, one trail that leads to life, right? I was thinking about the fact, you know, that in general, our journey in life is full of ups and downs. I'm sure we all have got some stories. But I was thinking, even if everything was perfect, even if there was a fluke and everything perfect happened to us, and we ate tacos all day long, every day, never gained a pound, no one ever betrayed us, we never experienced trials of any kind, it still would be a path that led to no hope. Because only in Jesus is there hope. And when we join his path, everything changes. And now, no matter how good we thought we had it, we realize that that point is when things get good, right? That's the point that things get good. And now all of a sudden there's hope and these signs start popping up and it says scenic view ahead everywhere we look. Because hope is ahead of us at all times and things at times can get rocky. But now there's a power available to us when we walk and we can face anything, and, and things, at times we might not be able to see what's always ahead, but for the first time on the trail with God, we can just be at peace, and we don't have to fear, and we don't have to have it all figured out, and we get to experience a supernatural rest on our walk. And the journey at times might be long, but now we're walking with the provider the sustainer and we have everything we need at every time there was a major plot twist in our lives when we say yes to jesus and it's not just now we have a good future but our everyday life changes the way we walk every single day changes pastor david talked last week um, it was a beautiful message. I encourage you to go back and listen to it if you haven't had the chance. We talked about how in Jesus on his trail, now we've put off the old man and we've put on the new. 
And something begins to happen as we spend time with the Father. You know, one of our values here at the Life Church is to live the Spirit-filled life. Something happens when we begin to walk with the Spirit and the things that we desire start to change and we start to develop the heart of a Father. The heart of our Father, we become more and more like Him and we can come to this place that says, God, I want what you want. I want your desires, not mine. I used to think that the, the scripture that he gives me the desires of my heart meant he gave me what I wanted at any time. But it's that he gives me his desires. And the way that I love people change. The way that I, leave, I live my life changes and I catch myself a year, looking back a year and being like, I love people different than I did last year. It develops, it changes. We become more and we desire more the things that God desires. And there's two major things that I think impact everything. Two major things that I think he desires that impacts the way we live even now. And the first is this, is that he desires you. He desires relationship. He desires to be close with his people. Pastor Mike touched on the gospel story, but it's, it is the gospel, the Bible from beginning to end. It's a book about a father and his family. And the fact that he created us to be close and sin entered the world and all of a sudden there was separation. And God was so good and so kind and loves us so much that he would make a plan to send his son because there had to be a blood sacrifice for sin. And so he sent his son and his son came and lived a sinless life and he died for your sin and my sin. And this is what I think is so beautiful is that in the temple, there was a temple at the time, like a, a literal temple, I'm gonna say literal, but I, I'm gonna tell you I mean literal because I say literal a lot and I don't actually mean that. Do y'all ever do that? You're like, literally his head exploded and you're like, oh, that's gross. Okay, but literally there was a temple and at the time when Jesus died, it said that th there was a curtain in the temple and it literally tore in two. This curtain was what separated humanity from, from the Father humanity from the presence of God. It was torn in two. God desires to be close to us. He desires relationship. And the second thing he desires that I think influences everything we do is he desires that everyone would know that, that everyone would receive that. Pastor Wall also often says, the only thing going to heaven are people. The Lord cares about people. He cares about where people are turning up, where they're going in heaven. So we begin to see these desires develop in us and we realize, I actually love people. I love people and it looks different than I did a year ago. And while it's a process, we can even look back in five years and say, man, it's just different the way that I care about people and it's so great. It's a great thing to have because there's also a work ahead of us to reach those people. That God would use us to reach humanity and to tell them this amazing gospel story and to see people set free and healed and delivered that he would use you and he would use me. You know, before Jesus ascended, he gathered his disciples and he gave them the great commission. And he said to go into the world and make disciples, his disciples to go and make disciples disciples and that didn't end when the disciples left this earth that that continues to us today there's a work ahead of us this side of heaven and we are a part of it and I want to stay on this for a minute know this today that you are called Pastor Walt is called, Pastor David is called, Pastor Grace is called, but I just wanna make sure today that you know that you are called, that you play a part. This word called feels a little lofty sometimes. It feels like a little reserved, you know, like for certain people, because we know us, and we're like, surely not me, but yet the Lord says you are called. The word called simply means to call to myself to summon, it's the word that he used when he called the disciples, when he would call a child to him, when he would call a crowd to, to preach and to teach them, we are called. Everyone say, I'm called. I wanna read in Acts 13, I'm gonna hit a couple of things 
I love when we're talking about on the, dra- on the trail and a journey and a, a work before us, I love to read about Paul and Barnabas in Acts 13 and 14. From called to completing their, their specific assignment, it's awesome. We won't get into it, but I encourage you to read it. Um, we won't get to finish it, but I encourage you to read it. But I'm going to read in, in uh, verse 2, and I'm going to set it up. It's the church in Antioch, and there's prophets and teachers who've gathered together to worship. And this is what it says in verse 2. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. I just wanna point out that in this room were many qualified people. There are many people who love Jesus. And I also wanna point out that this is when Jesus has already been resurrected and there is much work to do. And yet God would call in the room and point out two specific people for a specific work. And I wanna encourage you today that the Lord will call you in a room full of people that we sometimes deem more qualified for ourselves. He will, he will call you for a specific task. And it's up to us whether or not we're gonna partner with God in that. See, he has especially and uniquely equipped you. You, he's especially equipped you for tasks. And it might be something as big as going on a missionary journey, but it could be starting a business. It could be a prompting to pray for our leaders and pray for our pastors or to come and to serve at church and to greet and open a door or hold a baby in the nursery. But there's a calling because the Lord wants to love people. The Lord wants to reach people and he uses us to do that. And it's time that we personalize that for ourselves, right? That we stop looking to our left and to our right or stop thinking that just, I don't know, I feel like the Lord said that, but I think maybe he meant that for my mom or for my brother or for my sister. Many years ago, um, you know, I, I told you we had, that the Lord had led us back here and we served for many years. I served in different places and there was a time where um, I had the opportunity to come and be the nursery director. And this was one of these moments where I knew the Lord had called me to do it, but I kind of looked around like, I think there's probably someone better because here's the thing about being a nursery director is you have to depend on people and you have to talk to people. And I was so scared, like all the time, like don't call on me to pray, don't call on me to speak. I was so scared. I'm like, I'm gonna have to talk to people. I'm gonna have to like ask things of people. And so I I just knew though that the Lord had called me to do it. And so I was stepping out and uh, I had gotten to the point where I'm gonna be honest, I just tapped out family and friends. I started there, it was a safe place, right? But I'm like, we knew more people. And so I, I was like, I'm going to do it today. And I was standing out in this hallway. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask somebody that I don't know. And so I don't exactly remember how the conversation went. It probably wasn't the smoothest conversation. But I said something along the lines of someone's coming up. And I'm like, hi, I'm Amber. I'm the nursery doctor. You have a beautiful smile. Will you please come and serve um, and greet at the computers. I think you would be great at it. And yeah, just let me know. It's kind of like a check yes or no when you ask out your crush, like in, when you're 10 years old, <laughs> you know, it's like all the nerves of what are they gonna say? And so um, to be honest, I don't even remember what was said. It was kind of an awkward exchange. And uh, sorry, I was looking at my time. Okay, it was kind of an awkward exchange. And I, if she said yes, I felt like it might've been a pity yes. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember what happened, but she came back after service. And what happened in that moment really changed my life. And she said this, she said, I'm so sorry if I acted awkward earlier. I just couldn't believe that you would ask me. And I was like, what do you mean by that? You come in this, church every single Sunday and you hear the same truth that I have and you know the same God that I know and, and you love and the same God that I, why would he choose you, uh, me and not you? That makes no sense. And all of a sudden something changed and I got really mad at the devil. I got really mad and here I am even struggling. It changed the way that I, I, I do everything in life now, but it changed the way. I hope you know today that this is meant for you, that you are called. We don't get to decide the qualifications. I look back at the story um, of, of Saul. We're talking about Barnabas and Saul. And uh, 
I, I love this part where Saul was actually like, he hated Christians at one point. He's like known for persecuting Christians. He's arresting them at the moment, and the Lord miraculously intervenes, and he's blind at this point, and he's going to call someone. So he calls this man named Ananias, and he says, go to Saul. And I love Ananias. This is kind of my paraphrase. You can go back and read it. But I felt like Ananias was a little bit like, say what? Okay, I know things are, you know, the resurrection happened. There's a lot going on, so I just want to make sure you know who Saul is. Because if you just remembered who Saul is, you probably wouldn't have called. And the word of the Lord came back to Ananias, and he said, go. He said, he is my chosen instrument. The one who persecuted, who ended up writing two-thirds of the New Testament, God said, I called him before Saul converted, before Saul, I mean, Saul was literally anti-Christian, and yet he chose him. Other people don't get to decide if we're qualified to answer the call of God in our life, and we don't either. God doesn't make mistakes. He didn't make mistakes then. He doesn't make mistakes now. There's no point where, in as simple sometimes as just stepping out and praying, I know that that feeling can be. I know how scared it can feel. We can feel sometimes when we step out and we realize that we don't have the power in and of ourselves to do things. And yet God shows up every time. And there's never going to be a time, I just want you to know that you feel ready. There's never going to be a time when you just feel like you know everything. It, answering the call of God on our life, it's not about what we know. It's not, and there be, it might be times where God calls us to go back to school or get some training in something and whatever that may be. But it, we can answer God's call as we are now because he does not make mistakes. And sometimes we think, but if he just knew what I did. But if you just know what I was going through or my pain, I love the scripture that says that he comforts us in our pain so that we can go and comfort others. God is so good and he can use anything and anybody. You know, I think back to my life and I'm like, I wish that I hadn't spent years of my life. I wish it wasn't my story that I was battling anxiety and OCD and panic and all these things. I wish that wasn't part of my story. And yet it didn't disqualify me. And still, God uses that. And now I can impact and reach people in ways that other people can't. Sometimes it's those things, sometimes it's our experiences and our pain that actually qualifies the most for certain tasks. You may walk in on a Sunday morning and see 10 people greeting and think I'm not needed, but I want you to know that no one can greet like you can. No one can bring your experiences mixed with your personality, mixed with your looks and all of those things. All of those can play a part. You are essential to the kingdom of God. I hope you know that. Can you say again, I'm called. You are essential to the kingdom of God. You're essential to this church, to this community. And this is going to sound dramatic, and I really mean it, but you're essential to the world. You just never know the smallest thing, the smallest task, the prayer, the opening a door, making someone feel welcome, making someone feel loved, going and spreading the gospel and stepping out in faith because it takes faith. It takes faith to do that. We can know something, but it has to have faith for it to be effective. We have to be able to take that step. And it takes a lot of faith sometimes to tell our neighbor about Jesus and to share the gospel, but it can change the world. Amen? All right. The way that we can have this type of confidence is because you're not alone. And this is where it comes to, is that we're never ever alone. Before Jesus died, people didn't understand what he was talking about. And he says this, he says, it's better that I go because the Holy Spirit is coming and the Holy Spirit is our helper and he brings power and we need it for the journey because not everything is perfect. It's not, I, I, be honest, when we step out, not everything is perfect. We still experience distractions and disruptions and opposition. It happens, we can't expect a perfect life. And I, I laugh because I feel like that's such a simple, like, 
of course. And yet it still shocks me all the time. Anybody else, when, you, when you're doing something and you're like, oh no, something bad happened, it's like, well, of course that happens. That's life. And uh, I want to read down in, in chapter 13, a time where, see, Saul, who's now Paul, and Barnabas were called and set apart for this work. He called them, he set it apart, and they're going now, and they're missionaries, and they're spreading the gospel from city to city. And along the way, you, if you read through it, you'll see that they just encountered many distractions, many disruptions and opposition at time. But this is what happened, and I'm gonna start in verse six. It says, they traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named bar -Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul, Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. So here's an opportunity. And it's great because God equipped them for such a time as this. It says, but Elamis the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. So this is what Saul does. He says, it says, then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elamis and said, you are a child of the devil. And he goes on to speak truth. There is discernment. He knows what's going on behind the scenes and he puts an end to it. And the pro council comes and he actually comes to know Jesus. He did that because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is the same Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And the Bible says it lives in us today. Amen. We may face opposition and trials at times, but there's a power available that we can choose to lean into. And I say choose here for a reason because sometimes, you know, I, we, I just think that sometimes we can live in a way that we just think things will just miraculously happen. But a lot of times it's our choosing and our leaning into. I remember just this past week, I noticed that there was a moment that the, the enemy was baiting me and I had a choice in that moment. I'm like, I can have a pity party and I can be upset about this, or I can speak truth. And, and I'm gonna be honest, I did both. <laughs> I had a little pity party, and then I repented, and I came back, and I was like, no, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna, I keep going back to this place of I can't. This is too hard. I don't want to, but I'm gonna come back to the truth that I know that God has called me that God has called me and that means he's equipped me and there's a power inside of me and I can speak truth in this situation and we can step into a room and the entire atmosphere changes, the entire end changes because of that power available. It happens in partnership. It's actually not so much about our qualifications and our perfection, but it's about relationship in partnership, that God would choose to partner with us to make his gospel known, to love people. He partners with us. You know, uh, this past week, I was cooking with my son, with Kyler, and uh, to be honest, he was grounded from all electronics. I was kind of the next best option at that point in time. Any, anybody with teenagers, y'all get me? I'm sorry, I called you out, Kyler, I love you. Sorry, dude. Okay. But he, he had stayed and helped me. And so we started talking and he got over by the stove and he doesn't know much about cooking yet. So I used the opportunity and, and we're going through, we're trying not to burn things. You know, he's like, when do I stir? And it took a lot of, of interaction between the two of us. And, uh, but dinner ended up being good and it honestly was like one of the best parts of my day. The best parts of my day. And I was thinking it's because, you know, he's my kid and I love opportunities to be able to teach him. And anytime in relationship, when there's vulnerability and there's a teachable heart, can you think of a time where a relationship isn't deepened? I was just thinking when we walk with the Lord and we have to step out in faith and do things that he's called us to do, he's really calling us to him because it has to be done in partnership. 
There's no, I got this by myself. We need him. We need the Holy Spirit. He's saying, it's time to stir. And all we have to do is say, yes, Lord. That's all that has to happen. And I, I'm super passionate about serving. I'm super passionate. And it's not necessarily just because many hands make a light load, and, and they do. Life Kids is actually out there today. They didn't even know what I was speaking on. Looking for more volunteers. I encourage you, pray about it. If, the Lord, if there's even an inkling that maybe you're called to children's ministry, I encourage you to go sign up and just see. See what happens. But it's not just because many hands make a light load, but it's my own personal testimony. I cannot imagine what my life would look like if I hadn't have had so many times to step out and say, Lord, I need you. I need to hear your voice in this situation. I need to know what's on the other side. I need you to guide me. I need you. With that type of vulnerability and teachability, our relationship has grown so strong. It's grown so strong. That's what happens when we partner with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Thank you, Father. I really do believe that God is called and equipping you that there's people in this room who have businesses on their heart and you might look around and say, but there's three others. I'm just here to tell you today, but there's no one that offers what you have. We need you, the world needs you. Would you stand with me today as we just close out? I just wanna pray over us. When we come to Jesus, I think that there's some understanding that we are known fully. But as we continue to walk out, we have the opportunity to really accept that not only are we fully known, but that we are fully loved. We are fully loved. You're fully loved today, knowing everything, and He still chooses you. He would choose, it was his desire. He delights in choosing you. And so I just, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want us to just take a moment and just seek the Lord. What is it that he's calling us to do? Maybe it's to pray. Maybe it's to serve. Maybe we know exactly what it is and we've been setting it aside because we're scared. And so right now, if you would just reach your hands out, I wanna pray. Father, I just pray for a fresh and filling of the Holy Spirit today. Lord, that we would leave today full of courage and confidence, not in our own ability, but that you would call us called, but that you would, you would say that we're your chosen instruments, Father. God, I just thank you for the work to have your kingdom to be multiplied from this place today, that more people would be loved and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that more of your people would be cared for, Lord, and that this would impact the world. I thank you, Father God, for increased confidence today in Jesus' name. If you've never accepted Jesus as the Lord of your life, it's the best decision you'll ever make. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you'll be saved. Can we just all say Jesus is Lord? Just attach your faith to that. Jesus be Lord of my life. God, we just thank you.